Consequentialism or utilitarianism is a branch of ethics that looks at consequences of our actions or the results or the utility of any action to judge whether it is ethical or not. And the two philosophers that uh, we attribute this approach to more than anyone, at least in the modern period, is Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. So let's take a look at what they are proposing. When we approach this in ethics, we often like to use the example of the lifeboat. Your ship has gone down and now you are in the lifeboat with several other people. Unfortunately, there's too much weight in the boat and we have to begin to throw things overboard lest everyone die. But alas, everything has been thrown overboard except people. And so it comes down to who must go overboard in order to save everyone else or should anyone go overboard is the question. In the boat, there is a lovely young mother and her little infant child. There is a venerable old professor. Lo and behold, there's the Pope. He's in the lifeboat with you. A Navy SEAL. And a studious student. Now, how do we go about deciding who should have to go overboard and try to avoid the temptation of asking, well, can't we just uh, go out of the boat and swim and hang on and so on and so forth? No, the waters are icy and there's sharks and uh, you have to solve the problem of who must go overboard. Well, of course, no one wants to pick the baby, and uh, people argue, well, the professor's lived a long life, and perhaps he should go, although he's the one that's maybe going to help people learn to be ethical. And, of course, you don't like to throw popes in the ocean because, after all, they are saints. A lot of people would be upset if we did that, and yet, on the other hand, uh, his eternal security is pretty set in place. He Maybe he ought to go overboard. The Navy SEAL. Maybe the Navy SEAL, uh, we could add to the scenario that the Navy SEAL has uh, been convicted of uh, military crimes, and so he's not such a wonderful person. However, he does have a lot of talents that could help people survive. And then there's the young student with most of their life ahead of them. Wouldn't want to throw them overboard. How do you decide? Well, this is what we refer to as consequentialism. We're, we are evaluating between throw in the Navy SEAL, throw in the Pope, throw in the Pope, or throw in the professor, and so on and so forth. What would be the consequences of doing that and try and figure out what is the best solution based on the projected consequences? Of course, I say projected because you never know for certain what the future holds, regardless of what you choose. But this is utilitarianism. This is consequentialism. As opposed to a more absolute approach like divine ethic or uh, virtue ethics, or like we will see in other videos, where someone might say, no, I follow the divine uh, command that says thou shalt not kill, and so no one goes overboard, and if we all die, we all die. That's God's business. That would be another approach. Okay, well, with Bentham, and, and you can see his dates there, late 18th century, we have the focus be in ethics begins to shift from egoistic to taking into account the social dimensions of ethics, how it's going to affect not just me egoistically, but how it's going to affect everyone. And so Jeremy Bentham came up with a calculus 
of felicity or a calculus of happiness or a formula, as it were, for happiness. And he had an elaborate matrix in which you could rate every type of action that you might engage in, type of pleasure that you might receive, and you could calculate with his seven categories of pleasure a score, a number that would represent the value of any given action. Were he alive today, of course, this would be in an app on your phone. As it turns out, it's only number seven uh, of his seven categories that truly withstood this test of time, and that is the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. And this, of course, is the motto of utilitarians. Well, it wasn't long before Bentham's student, John Stuart Mill, realized that we must take into account quality, not just quantity. You can't just put a number on happiness because not everything can be turned into digits. Not everything can be quantified, such as qualities, the experiences that we have subjectively. And so he says, for instance, how do we go about ensuring that people make the decisions that are the best in the long run. And to, and to illustrate, we could say if we went to a group of kindergartners and we said, all right, we're going to take a vote so that we can come up with the number that represents the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest amount of kindergartners. And we asked the kids, how many of you want to practice your letters and how many of you want to go and play on the playground? And then we count the responses. Well, I think we all know how that vote will come out. Playground, thumbs up. And so Mill says, of course, they're not qualified themselves to make a decision in this regard. John Stuart Mill brings us sort of full circle uh, within the utilitarian camp of having to account for both quality and quantity in ethics.